So he asked the basic question, what is it costing us to produce a gram of cannabis? And no one, not even Mark Lucas, could answer that. Creditors of medicinal cannabis company Canasouth have approved a deed of company arrangement put forward by an investor group that will keep the listed company afloat. Fiona, why did Canasouth go into voluntary administration in the first place? So Canna South was, of course, the first um, medicinal cannabis company to list on the stock exchange back in 2019. But like many other medicinal cannabis companies, it's been a struggle. You know, it's been a really heavy regulatory burden on them. Um, it's been difficult to raise cash. And so they've been limping along trying to uh, get to the finish line where they actually make reasonable revenues. And in Canna South's case, they just basically ran out and convertible note holders weren't willing to tip in more money under the existing management and the existing model. So they, um, the note holders had a clause under their contract uh, that allowed them to uh, basically put in a forensic accountant to look under the hood, which they did. He, you know, the question was, should we tip it into receivership or could it be saved? And he came back and said to them, I think there's some things we can do to it that, will, that we can save it, but it'll need to go into voluntary administration in order to do that because that gives them a bit of a breathing space around their debts while they thrashed out a funding deal. So what happens next under the deed of company arrangement that was signed? So that just only just got signed last week. Um, it puts in uh, the forensic accountant, David Peterson, has been appointed as acting CEO. He doesn't want the job long term, but he's going to at least see it to, on the track to success. Um, there's a new board being appointed by the administrators, probably the final act, so that'll happen in the next couple of months. So under the deed, um, a group of uh, investor shareholders are mainly former Equala shareholders, so uh, Canna South merged with another entity, a Bay of Plenty rival, in June last year. So a lot of those shareholders haven't been happy since the merger, and they've basically fronted up another three million, up to another three million, to keep the company afloat till it's t- to position where it can, you know, support itself. Uh, most of the creditors are getting repaid in full, and the convertible note holders that are already existing are saying, "Well, we'll, t- we'll hold off for now and being repaid while we see what happens." So, what did the acting CEO David Peterson think? What did he say when he looked under the hood of the company? Well, he yeah, he didn't mince words around this. He was pretty scathing. So shortly after voluntary administration, Mark Lucas, who was the CEO, is one of the co-founders, he resigned, and so did the CFO, uh, Colin Foster. Um, and Peterson said when he got in there, he just found that the you know it was just burning cash way too quickly, and so he's taken a very heavy prune to costs. They were already doing that. He just didn't think they'd gone far enough. For example, he's halved staff numbers to you know from 38 to 19 basically. Um, He said they didn't have a really good idea of the detailed costing. So he asked the basic question, what is it costing us to produce a gram of cannabis? And no one, not even Mark Lucas, could answer that. Now, it's very difficult to run a business. I would would agree with him on that if you don't know what things are costing you to produce them. So he's gone in there and he's done all that work and, and, you know, really thinks that uh, with a bit of shuffling around, he can can get it to come right. He's he's not talking too much about when he thinks he can uh, get cash flow positive. The big question for him is whether to keep growing. So the point of the merger was really to be a vertically integrated company. Canada South's one of only two in the industry that is. And it made a big deal of that at the merger because you had Canna South doing dried flour and you've got Aqualis doing the CBD uh, oral solutions and the extractions. And so they were kind of a one-stop shop, if you like. They also had the Restore Clinic selling to patients. Um, but he's saying, is it economic to actually do the growing or not? And they spent $8 million on this fantastic facility down in the Waikato about three years ago. Uh, it's a manufacturing and a growing facility. There's a lot of interest from other people in that facility. Um, so he He's making a call now on, on really a number of options. He can lease it, he can um, do a joint venture, he can um, you know contract grow for someone else, he can grow for themselves and actually see if that is viable or there, as I say, he's had about three offers from people including one of the former co-founders, uh, Nick Foreman, about buying it. And what does Patterson think about the rules that are governing selling cannabis in New Zealand? Well, NBR, um, you know, looked at this in quite some depth. Dita De Boney, when I, well, I did an overview of, the, of where the industry was at. I mean, you know, the Medicinal Cannabis Act 2020, um, it states that doctors can prescribe both these CBD and uh, THC products to patients, but uh, they can't be advertised what, what the benefits are. So it's kind of... 
you know, Pedersen calls it an insane regulation where you are required by law to make this really high quality pharmaceutical grade product, but you then can't say why it's better than the one down the road that may not be. You know, it, he's kind of wanting to be able to crow about the benefits of what they're doing and not being able to do it, and he just thinks that's crazy. So he's focused very much on exports. He's um, saying that pharmaceutical grade standard would, might stand it in good stead offshore, and particularly in markets like Europe. So he's looking for that for the dried flour, and um, they're about to start uh, exporting their um, CBD oral, ex, uh, oral solutions and extractions. They former management had planned to do that, but they had regulatory problems. That's now been sorted, so they can go ahead and do that now. Now, Canada South shares have been suspended since late May. What's happening on that front? Obviously, when it went, uh, you know, there's a trading halt and then it went into voluntary administration. So the shares are stuck at 9.8 cents compared to the 50 cents when the uh, IPO happened. And, you know, the, uh, a lot of retail shareholders at that time, mum and dad investors, came in through, mainly in particular through the Sharesies platform. So they've got a bunch of, um, you know, hardcore investors and these retail investors, and the shares have been suspended. Now, the new board will have to make a call on whether they want to stay listed or whether they delist. Uh, Peterson's recommendation is to is to come off come off the boards. He thinks the costs of it aren't worth the benefits. He says that doesn't mean the shareholders are going to get burnt though. There are other ways you can issue shares other than on the exchange. So his view is it's just not worth it. But as I say, the board will have to make that call. And do you think Kenneth South can be saved? Well, I think it's still uncertain. Um, but, as Peterson said, he wouldn't have put his neck on the line or gone this far down the, the route if he, if he didn't think it could be, and he's seen the numbers better than anyone. So I think, you know, obviously the, the steps he's taken, you know, to use a pun, he's done some heavy pruning and there's some green shoots showing now. So I think, you know, we could be hopeful that it will survive, if not thrive. MBR is offering a special July-only deal, $399 for a year subscription. So you'll be able to find me on mbr.co.nz.